Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf at the wonderful Royal Quebec Golf Club. We have a few nice days left this season, and uh, we want to end the outdoor season with the continuation of our Cameron Champ series. And, you know, like, a, like we mentioned in the earlier videos, Cameron Champ seriously has the model swing for what we teach and what we believe a human being on planet Earth needs to swing, you know, and, and you look at anatomically, I'm going to show you a few more disciplines and tasks that are everyday things for many of us, or every weekend thing. If you're going to the cottage, you need to do some work at the cottage. And uh, you'll see just how we assemble that loaded arm club unit in the backswing. So last week we talked about the takeaway and how in order to get some width in the backswing, how both elbows are staying in front of them and we're taking the club back and you notice how the, the legs, the femurs, so half your knee is your femur and your femur is your hip. The only way that the pelvis and rib cage are going to turn on top of the hips is if they're moved by the legs. So if I move my arms, well, you notice my arms can only go so far before they collapse. And you'll notice that's not very far. So in order for my arms to maintain width, well, the rib cage and the pelvis have to move out of the way. A real simple way to look at that is if you were... You know, we're just doing this this morning with uh, one of my female students who was told to keep her head down and not move her head. And she had no swing and she was wondering why she was struggling with distance and why she was so gosh darn sore at the end of the day. Needless to say, it was our first lesson together and it went extremely well. And uh, we got her some extra distance and we removed all of the strain. So that went extremely well. So if I had a, a ball in each hand and I want to toss this ball towards somebody over here and I want to toss that ball towards somebody there, well, this would not work. They're going in the opposite direction. The only way I have access over here is if my brain removes the, the body out of the way so I have complete access. And notice the only way I get width is with rotation. So if I'm tossing this ball towards you, the brain's gonna go get the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way, and now I have a nice width in your direction. If I do the opposite with my lead hand, well, there's my takeaway. Notice how I'm tossing the ball towards you. The brain is using my right foot, moving that right leg and moving that hip this way, the right hip in that direction. And now my rib cage and pelvis are free and clear so that my left arm can swing towards you. And that's why you see a lot more of these takeaways on tour now, where it looks like the club head is outside the hands. Well, we just moved away without allowing the arms to collide into the rib cage. And now the arms are in a great position to load. Now, why is it so important to load the arms? Well, <clears throat> if I was swinging a sledgehammer, it may not be as important to load the arms because I've got this big mass right here that I can use to pound the nail into that railroad tie. But if I had to heave it up and I used a golf swing, notice that would be a, a lot of strain to get that up there. And now when I want to come back down, there's, there's a lot of load and strain on those wrists. So the change of direction from backswing to forward swing would be a little bit more of a strain. So I'm going to split my hands, heave it up there, and then let everything fall into that nail. So when I've got a much lighter object, well, I need to load that arm club unit a lot better. So if I had a grass whip in my hands and I was cutting through grass, this would only get me so far if the grass or the weeds are much thicker, then I'd have to allow it to load. So notice as I get back here, my right arm at one point is going to have to fold. If it doesn't, it shoves me out of position. 
So I allow it to fold, and you notice how when the right arm folds, you can try this right now at home, make a fist palm up. Extended palm up, you'll notice a lot of tension in that forearm. Go palm down, you'll feel that tension dissipate. Same thing when you fold it palm down, you'll feel some tension in the top of the forearm. If you go back to palm up, you'll feel it dissipate. So the arm is really designed to rotate. You, we talk about inward rotation is pronation and outward rotation is supination. So as I go back, my right arm is going to fold and supinate while the left arm extends and pronates. Now I'm going into the finish. Let's say if I want to go cut through the grass, the brain goes to the ground, uses the ground to get my body out of the way, cut through. So as I cut through, notice how when my right arm extends, it pronates inward and the left arm folds out of the way, it supinates out of the way. This is a yielding process. It is exactly the same thing as a topspin backhand in ping pong. This is a check swing, very defensive. This is a released swing, offensive. So we're looking for a nice offensive release. Let it fold and hinge. Let it extend, then it folds and rehinges on the other side. So if I'm cutting grass in both directions, now all of a sudden, I've got a nice load and I've got a nice sling. So without that loading action, you're gonna have a hard time.